Hello, I'm Rob Reed, and we're here at Varvid today with Aaron Booker, the owner, and we're introducing a brand new video switcher, the Roland V60. So today, Aaron, we're gonna take a closer look at the features of the V60, kind of a quick overview, and talk a little bit about some of the applications of the V60 and some of the things that you've done with your customers already with this particular product. Well, I'm pretty excited about it because one of our local high schools actually is using this specific switcher to uh, do basketball games, to live stream basketball games. And I'm also really excited for them for what's going to be possible at, say, graduations. They're talking about maybe doing a daily news show, um, just recording to tape, of course, uh, like we are today. So, you know, that kind of thing. Excellent. So, you know, live streaming for sports is one application. There's multiple applications for the V60, of course. Um, I can see a lot in uh, corporate and event applications, um, as well as maybe even houses of worship, where they want to you know, stream their services and things like that. So lots of different applications. You're preaching to the choir, pun intended. <laughs> um, in, in, in all seriousness, what I find is one of the features that I'm most excited about, and maybe we want to start talking about some of the ins and outs, but the ability to have an aux a video aux out at this price point. So for $3,000 to be able to uh, send, say, a PowerPoint. And so why don't you talk a little bit about how we could do that, because that's such a standard thing for people yeah. to be doing. Absolutely. So let's start with the I.O. of the V60. Uh, first of all, there's four SDI inputs and two HDMI inputs. Actually, the uh, sixth input can be HDMI or this analog RGB. So some people have that mm -hmm. old analog computer input, so that's great to have. PGA, baby. Yeah, so, um, and channels five and six have full scaling on them. So you can bring in uh, pretty much any data resolution from a tablet to an iPad to a computer, which is really handy. Yeah. To a PC that's running 1024 by 768. Well, yes, in a, there in a, are a few. In the modern world. Yeah, there's yeah. a few. And then on the output for video, we have a two SDI outs and two HDMI outs plus a multi-view out. So what's cool about the two SDI outs and two HDMI outs, they're fully programmable and Love assignable. That. Love and that. And that can be programmed to uh, either program the preview bus or, as we were talking about earlier, the aux bus. So in that scenario, as you were talking about for a presentation, let's say you're in a room uh, doing a presentation, you have a screen doing iMeg that has your PowerPoint, and then you have your camera sources. Well, people in the room don't need to see a close-up of the person speaking <laughs> on the camera. With, with all 75 of them. Yeah. yeah. But in that case, you would assign the computer input to be your aux bus. And the top layer here with these uh, smaller buttons, that's your aux bus that can be just assigned to go to your projector in your room. Mm -hmm. And then with uh, your A bus and B bus on the main program out, that could be for your web stream or it could be for your recording. And I love that because there's no question that it's a completely different experience for the people that are in the room versus the people that are um, remote. And so giving that, that separate experience for the people in room um, really makes a huge difference. Absolutely, I completely agree. The other cool thing is the integration of audio. And yes. you know, the Roots with Roland, we've got some pretty powerful audio features built into the V60. Uh, the first being is uh, there's four XLR microphone inputs on here mm -hmm. with, uh, with Phantom Power 4 microphones. If you need it, you can turn it mm -hmm. on and off. Great for a panel. Yep, and then you also have a couple of other uh, analog inputs on the back as well. So um, RCA input. Uh, so you can bring in, you know, music from an iPod or something like that, or background music for some other reason. And then you also have the ability to mix in audio from your uh, video sources as well, like SDI or HDMI. The other thing that we have in terms of capabilities and uh, getting stuff in and assigning is we have a USB port here, and I already have a memory stick built into that. Um, we can bring in still images, graphics, logos, or we can store our favorite settings for the V60 on a flash key. And when I then uh, go to another show or event or whatever, I can recall all of those, our favorite settings. So you don't have to go in there and do all the setup again. So event people, imagine you're going back to the same room over and over again, but then you need to go to a different room once in a while. 
Isn't that awfully nice? Very thoughtful. <laughs> oh, Rob, I love that. <laughs> yeah, so it's really, really cool feature. We put that in a lot of our switchers because we know people are doing uh, live events all over the place, or maybe there's multiple services in a church, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or maybe they have different uh, applications for corporations. All right, let's go into the menu here. I'm gonna select the menu button. I just wanna show some of the features. You'll be able to see that on the uh, the multi-viewer, the, the, the feature. So if I go to video input, you can see I have my SDI ins, my HDMI in, and as I mentioned, HDMI uh, or, or input six could be HDMI or RGB. And you can go down there and you can assign it whether it's HDMI or RGB or component. So that's the capabilities of that. You probably saw one of our cameras go away because that's what we have for HDMI. And then, um, and then you can see we also have still images, uh, background sources and things like that on uh, bus seven and eight. And then on the video output, uh, you can see we have SDI out one, two, and HDMI out one and two. And this is where you actually assign if you're sending it to program out, preview out, or aux. So SDI out one, I can send a program or I can switch that. Um, let's switch it to preview or I can switch that, assign that to my aux bus. Especially useful if you're in a room where you're long, running a long cable. SDI yeah. is perfect to go to your projector or yep. screen. Yep. As you know, HDMI And you could convert running. it at the far end to whatever you need yep. it to be. Exactly. Yeah. So each one of those four outputs are fully assignable to those three uh, 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 output formats. All right, so let's go down to the system. I just want to show you. Um, it also support HDCP, so if you do have um, HDCP content, not necessarily for your live stream, of course, but for your in-room, um, essentially what it does is it'll uh, disable your SDIs, but allows you to still use your HDMI outs to go to your projectors or screens. So, so that would be like a DVD, yeah. uh, if you got a DVD player or something like that that requires HDCP, you need to be able to make that change. Exactly. Currently, right now, our system format's set to 1080i. It supports 1080p, 1080i, and 720p those three resolutions, which is really cool. And then on the SDI inputs, we have a really um, unique feature that uh, most switchers in the market that don't have, it has a de-interlacer. So I can mix and match right. I and P resolutions. So really maybe nice. this camera could be P, the, cam the two cameras we're using on the front could be I, and you can mix and match and, those And what's nice sources. for that too, from uh, uh, many cameras uh, at the very high end of the market, actually only do 1080i60, 1080i5994, and many cameras at the low end of the market uh, only also do that. And we find that it's kind of our mid-tier cameras that actually really support 1080p60. Um, so that's really nice to give that flexibility. So then you can mix your, your cameras, mix and match, and, and take advantage of older cameras you've got um, that shoot a great picture. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at the top panel again. Um, I want to um, point out um, some features on our top panel. Let's talk a little bit about audio. Um, so audio control, uh, there will be a remote control software that you can control your audio levels and your effects. So you, you can have EQ, you can have a gate, you can have compressor and some of the channels. Um, you also have delay capabilities. But on the top here, I have the ability to adjust my um, analog uh, inputs from my audio levels coming from my microphones. Really quickly, easily adjust that. Um, we also have another feature called auto mixing. So what auto mixing does and how I get to that is I go to menu item 10 and I hit enter. Auto mixing allows you to set weighting per channel. So you can see on audio, uh, audio input one, that could be my microphone mm -hmm. for my presenter. Maybe they're moderating a panel. Mm -hmm. So the presenter audio, I want to be weighting at 100%. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, I wanna go now next to my uh, audio input two and I want uh, auto mixing on. Maybe they're a panelist, so I want to turn down their um, their weighting to be Lean like eighty five percent. Yeah, maybe they're a yeller. <laughs> maybe I don't know what it is, but <laughs> if they're all talking at the same time, instead of trying to ride the faders here, yeah. what it allows you to do is set the weighting so that the the V sixty will automatically mix the audio level based on the weighting that you set. Really nice when you're a one man band, and of course that frequently happens. Absolutely. So all I have to do is all I have to do is press the auto mix button, 
And I can turn the auto mixing on or off per channel. So if I only want to do two channels, I can do that. If I can want to do all my channels, I can set a weighting per every single channel. One of the other favorite features that I like, especially if you're a one-man band, maybe you uh, are doing a live presentation for a client and they have you know, background music on their phone right. or iPod. They bring right. that in there right. um, on one of our analog inputs. I can set the weighting to maybe be like 10% and turn auto mixing off for the other channels except for microphone one, which would be the presenter. I'm not paying attention. They come and start speaking in the microphone. That background audio will automatically duck and make sure that the speaking presenter is at 100%. That's really so nice. So really, really nice. We bang, we nice bang into that a lot. Yeah, I'm sure you do for some of your, <laughs> your clients. So anyway, that's a little bit about audio. Again, uh, the remote control software is free download for Mac or Windows will be available in Q2 of 2018. So it's coming just around the corner. But you have access to all of the, uh, the audio effects and features. And, just and that's the something menu. that just while we're on the topic of software, Roland does a great job of keeping our software updated. So when you buy this, you want to make sure that you are uh, uh, checking for software updates. And again, you just come to either our website, we'll send you there, or to, to Rollins. The most important thing actually is to register your product and when you automatically register the V60 with your email address, anytime we come out with a software update, we will send you an email notification to say, visit our website, here's the new features built in. And because we're a premier uh, Roland reseller, you actually get an extra year of warranty also when you register your product. All right, so that's kind of the audio side. I think that kind of covers it. There's a lot of power mm -hmm. built into it, but those are some of the unique features. Um, let's just talk about, you know, quick operation. For example, if I wanted to switch between, um, you know, maybe a wide shot and maybe a close-up shot of the V60, I can just use my T-bar. Right now I'm on mix. My transition time is going to be, you know, maybe right around one second. If I hit my auto take button, it'll do a nice cross dissolve between those two sources. If I hit my cut button, you can see it's a straight cut. Uh, or I can again use my T-bar to go back and forth. Yep. Um, we also have the ability to do like a picture in picture window. So for example, if I wanted to do a pip of the, um, the background shot of that, I can hit pip and now I can bring that in there. And then I can use my um, value dials here and I can position that PIP window. Nice. And I can go in into the PIP parameter settings and I can change it from a quarter size to a third size to a half size. So lots of capabilities built in for the PIP. And you have two different PIP buttons. So one can be maybe assigned for upper right, cor upper left corner and the other can be assigned for upper right corner depending on what you have. The other capability, one of my favorite features is actually the split screen. So if I hit my split screen button, you can see that we have us talking and a close up of the back shot of the V60. So I can also use my positioning dials here to actually change the framing mm -hmm. of where I want to show uh, the split screen. Or you could feature me the more handsome and sure. older Let's do that. gentleman. Let's do that. There Let's we go. feature you. Yeah, so there I am. <laughs> so anyway, that's All right, back to you. you. Back to you. All right, so we've covered a lot with the V60. The last thing I really want to uh, uh, talk about is the DSK or downstream key. What that allows us to do is actually key out a blue background or a green background, just like Hollywood. Or if we're using graphics, we can put our graphics on a, on a white background or a black background and key that out. And simply what we've done is we've taken the, uh, the Varvid logo that you provided and we put it on a, um, on a flash key and we've uh, saved that as a 1920 by 1080 file format in Windows 24-bit uh, bitmap file, 24-bit bitmap file. And what you do is you go into the menu, USB memory, scroll all the way down toward the bottom and it says load still image and all I have to do is hit enter and you can see the uh, bitmap files that I can load um, into the, uh, the switcher. So These files happen to have been created on a Mac and so the little underline there at the beginning is the, is the, the extra file that Apple uses, so mm -hmm. don't use that one. Yeah, so once we've done the USB memory, then basically we go into our DSK setup here. Yeah. And I hit enter. Where is that source coming from? Is it coming from channel seven or channel eight? We've already know we've already assigned it to channel seven. 
And what type of keying? As you can see, we have multiple different types. That's white luminance, because we know the, the logo is on a white background, but I can also do key out a black background, or I can do a chroma green, or I can do a chroma blue. Nice. Let's change that back to luminance white, hit exit. Then all I have to do is hit the DSK button, and you can see I have the Varvid logo there in the lower right hand corner. Let's uh, do that uh, on the, let's, let's make our preview live because then it will be on your black shirt. And it will, uh, no, that, maybe not that one. Where can we do that where it would yeah. be better? Let's do it like just that. like that. Yeah. That so nice. as you can see, you what just a do a DSK, logo it's got is. the Varvid logo. And that's how you can help brand yourself if you're doing a yeah. live stream. Yeah. Or if you wanted to, if you just have like an intro title like who's speaking, yeah. you can do a lower third and key out the, back, the background on that to do. And the software, that. that brings me to a great point, mm -hmm. is what's really cool about the remote software is then you can actually load those lower thirds in, in real time. Um, yes, I've yet to see exactly how that all works. But I'm um, just based on previous roll-in yeah, software. Yeah, so some of our previous roll-in software, like with the VR4 HD, you can bring in a still image to the USB port. But the V60 has a LAN port on there for the remote control software. So exactly. you can get a Windows um, uh, version of it, or you can get a Mac version of it. And, um, and remotely control the V60. And it's super, super powerful because you can go in there and you can actually see the graphics of the EQ. Um, you can see the threshold of your gate or your compressor. So very, very intuitive and uh, easy to use as another way of controlling the V60. remember Q2 2018 for yep. that. But Rob gets to see the, the behind the scenes and where yeah. it's developing. What's, what's also really nice about that is that you can be anywhere on the network. So if you've got a uh, iPad or a, or, excuse me, not an iPad, but like a Microsoft Surface, Surface. Mm -hmm. or uh, a, a MacBook, then you can just run that wirelessly or be plugged into the network. Exactly. So again, this is the, uh, the V60. It's great for a multitude of live applications that can include streaming, sports events, education environments, corporate AV, yep. um, and houses of worship. So a number of different applications. Again, it's $29.95 list price. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey, if you're looking forward to buy it, um, Varvid is one of our premier video resellers. Well, thank you very much, Rob. And I hope to get some questions uh, on our YouTube channel or Facebook or wherever you're watching us. So please don't hesitate to ask, and we'd love to tell you more about what we're doing.